The Beechcraft Baron 58 is an all-metal, low-wing, twin-engine aircraft with retractable tricycle landing gear. The Baron is powered by two Continental IO520C six-cylinder horizontally opposed fuel-injected engines rated at 285 horsepower at 2700 rpm. The control lock is removed and stowed. The control column pin assembly is placarded with the installation instructions. Placard reading controls locked, remove before flight, will be facing the pilot if properly installed. The control levers are grouped along the upper face of the control console. Their knobs are shaped so they can be identified by touch. Parking brake set. The parking brake T-handle control is located just left of the elevator tab wheel on the pilot's sub-panel. To set the parking brakes, pull the control out and depress the pilot's tow pedals until firm. Push the control in to release the brakes. All switches off. Trim tabs set to zero. Trim tabs on the rudder, left aileron and elevator are adjustable with the controls mounted on the center console through closed cable systems. Mechanical position indicators for each of the trim tabs are integrated with their respective controls. The electric elevator trim system is controlled with the on-off switch, located on the instrument panel, a thumb switch on the control wheel and a circuit breaker on the left side wall. The thumb switch is moved forward for nose down, aft for nose up, and when released it returns to the center off position. When the system is not being electrically actuated, the manual trim control wheel may be used. Seats are positioned and locked with the backs upright. The seat backs of all standard seats can be placed in any of four positions by operating a release lever on the inboard side of each seat. Rudder pedals are adjusted. Seat belts and shoulder harnesses are fastened and adjusted. The seat belt is independent of the shoulder harness. The shoulder harness is a standard installation for all seats and must be used with the seats in the upright position. Parking brake set. All avionics off. Oxygen quantity and operation is checked. Landing gear handle down. The landing gear is controlled by a two position switch on the right side of the control console. The gear is operated through adjustable linkage connected to an actuator assembly, which is driven by an electric motor. It can be electrically retracted and extended, and may be extended manually. Cowl flaps, check open. The cowl flap for each engine is controlled by a separate switch located on the pilot sub-panel to the left of the control console. The cowl flap is closed when the switch is in the up position and open when the switch is down. An amber annunciator light on the floating instrument panel illuminates when its respective cowl flap is between one third and full open. Fuel selector valves, check operation then on. The fuel system is an off-on crossfeed arrangement. The fuel selector panel, located on the floor forward of the front seats, contains the fuel selector for each engine and a schematic diagram of fuel flow. The standard wing fuel system has a total capacity of 142 gallons. A vapour return line returns excess fuel from the engine to its respective wing system. All of the fuel cells, standard or optional, in each wing are interconnected in order to make all the usable fuel in each wing available to its engine when the fuel selector valve is turned to on. The standard 142 gallon and optional 172 gallon fuel systems are filled through a single filler located in each wing. The fuel lines for the engines are interconnected by crossfeed lines. During normal operation, each engine uses its own fuel pumps to draw fuel from its respective wing fuel system. However, on emergency crossfeed operations, either engine can consume the available fuel from the opposite side. The system cannot be used to transfer fuel from one wing system to the other. All circuit breakers, switches and equipment controls, check. Battery switch and alternator switches, on. The battery, magneto slash start and alternator switches are located on the left sub-panel. This panel contains most of the electrical system switches and switch type circuit breakers. The remainder of the electrical equipment circuit breakers are located on the pilot's side panel. 
The avionic circuit breakers are located on the right sub-panel. One 17 ampere hour 24 volts lead acid battery is standard and is located beneath the floor of the nose baggage compartment. The battery switch can be turned off in flight and the alternator will remain online. Two 5 ampere 24 volt gear driven alternators are controlled by two transistorized voltage regulators. Only one regulator is operable in the system at any one time. The remaining regulator is used as an alternate or standby unit. When switched into the circuit, either regulator will adjust alternate output to the required electrical load, including battery recharging. Selection of the regulators is provided by a two position selector switch on the pilot's sub panel. The alternators are protected by current limiters. Individual alternator output is indicated by two load meters on the instrument panel. The load meters give a percentage reading of the load on the system. Two warning lights, placarded alternator left right, located in the floating instrument panel, will illuminate whenever the respective alternator is disconnected from the bus by low voltage or an over voltage condition or with the switch in the off position. Any time a failure is detected, the appropriate alternator should be turned off. Fuel quantity indicators, check quantity. Fuel quantity is measured by float type transmitter units, which transmit the common level indication to a single indicator for each respective wing system. A minimum of 13 gallons of fuel is required in each wing system before takeoff. Landing gear position lights, check. The landing gear position indicator lights are located above the landing gear switch handle. Three gear lights, one for each gear, are illuminated whenever the landing gear are down and locked. The red light illuminates whenever one or all of the landing gear are in transit or in any intermediate position. All of the lights will be extinguished when the landing gear are up and locked. Throttle position, approximately half inch open. If either or both throttles are retarded below an engine setting sufficient to sustain two engine flight with the landing gear retracted, a warning horn will sound intermittently. Propeller pitch, low pitch. The engines are equipped with either two or three blade, full feathering, constant speed propellers. Springs aided by counterweights move the blades to high pitch and engine oil under governor boosted pressures moves the blades to low pitch. The propellers should be cycled occasionally during cold weather operation. This will help maintain warm oil in the propeller hubs so that the oil will not congeal. The propeller synchronizer automatically matches the RPM of both propellers. The system's range of authority is limited to approximately 25 RPM. Normal governor operation is unchanged, but the synchronizer will continuously monitor propeller RPM and adjust one governor as required. A magnetic pickup mounted in each propeller governor transmits electric pulses to a transistorized control box installed behind the pedestal. The control box converts any pulse rate differences into corrected commands, which are transmitted to the appropriate governor. A toggle switch installed on the pedestal turns the system on. To operate the system, synchronize the propellers in the normal manner, then turn the synchronizer on. To change RPM, adjust both propeller controls at the same time. This will keep the setting within the limiting range of the system. If the synchronizer is on, but unable to adjust the propeller RPM, the system has reached its range limit. Turn the synchronizer switch off, synchronize the propellers manually, and turn the synchronizer switch on. A propeller synchroscope, located in the tachometer case, operates to give an indication of synchronization of propellers. If the right propeller is operating at a higher RPM than the left, the face of the synchroscope, a black and white cross pattern, spins in a clockwise rotation. Counterclockwise rotation indicates a higher RPM of the left propeller. This instrument aids the pilot in accomplishing manual synchronization of the propellers. Mixture control, full ridge. Note, if the engine is hot and the ambient temperature is 90 Fahrenheit or above, mixture control is placed in idle cutoff, aux fuel pump is set to high for 30 to 60 seconds, then off. Mixture control is returned to full ridge. Magneto slash start switch, start. Observe starter limits. Note, in the event of a bolt start or over prime condition, 
place the mixture control in idle cutoff and open the throttle. Operate started to remove excess fuel. As engine starts, reduce throttle to idle RPM and place mixture control in full rich. The starters are relay controlled and are actuated by rotary type momentary on switches incorporated in the magneto slash start switches located on the pilot sub panel. To energize the starter circuit, hold the magneto slash start switch in the start position. After starting, release the switch to the both position. Warm up 1000 to 1200 RPM. Oil pressure 25 psi within 30 seconds. Alternator switch on. All engine indicators check. Using the same procedure, start the other engine. The flight instruments are located on a floating panel directly in front of the pilot. Standard flight instrumentation includes attitude and directional gyros, airspeed, altimeter, vertical speed, turn coordinator and a clock. A magnetic compass is mounted above the instrument panel and an outside air temperature indicator is located on the left side panel. Located on the right side of the instrument panel is the standard pressure gauge for the instrument air system. Pressure for the flight instruments, the ice boots and autopilot is supplied by two engine driven dry pressure pumps interconnected to form a single system. If either pump fails, check valves automatically close and the remaining pump continues to operate all gyro instruments. A pressure gauge on the instrument panel indicates pressure in inches of mercury. Two red buttons on the pressure gauge serve as source failure indicators, each for its respective side of the system. Most of the engine instruments are located in the upper centre of the instrument panel. The standard indicators for each engine are tachometers, manifold pressure, fuel flow, fuel quantity and load meters. Other indicators such as the exhaust gas temperature system and propellant de-ice ammeter are usually installed on the right side of the instrument panel. Engine ice protection consists of electrothermal fuel vent heaters controlled by a switch on the left panel and an automatic alternate air induction system. The only significant ice accumulation is impact ice on the inlet scoop and filter. Should the induction air scoop or filter become clogged with ice, a spring-loaded door on the firewall will open automatically and the induction system will operate on alternate air. Two multi-purpose instruments, one for each engine, indicate cylinder head temperature, oil pressure and oil temperature. The engine oil system for each engine is the full pressure wet sump type with a full flow integrally mounted oil filter with a 12 quart capacity. Oil operating temperatures are controlled by an automatic thermostat bypass control. The bypass control will limit oil flow from the oil cooler when operating temperatures are below normal and will permit the oil to bypass the cooler if it should become blocked. Note, do not operate engine above 1200 RPM until oil temperature reaches 75 Fahrenheit. Brakes, release and check. The brakes on the main landing gear wheels are operated by applying tow pressure to the top of the rudder pedals. Avionics on as required. Exterior lights as required. The switches for the navigation lights, landing lights, rotating beacons, nose gear taxi lights and wing ice lights are at the top of the pilot sub panel. The two wing leading edge lights are operated by separate switches. For longer battery and lamp service life, the landing lights are only used when necessary. The optional taxi light is offered for use during ground operation. At night, reflections from rotating anti-collision lights on clouds, dense haze or dust can produce optical illusions and vertigo. The use of these lights is not advisable under instruments or limited VFR conditions. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe.